Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us once again. Uh, welcome back. We have conducted so many seminars on the corporate, so many webinars on the corporate tax, and today we have decided to discuss the latest public clarification within the VAT on the sales or supply of electronic devices. First of all, I would like to say apologies from my side. I was supposed to have a webinar yesterday, but I postponed it because I was traveling. So this is a reason that we will not be able to have the webinar yesterday. So that we are having it today. In the future, Ms. Faiza, she's a tax director. She will be conducting the webinar in case I will be traveling or we both will be conducting if I am available. So let's start the discussion. The discussion, the topic is VAT on the sales of electronic devices. As I just mentioned, in our previous webinars, we have discussed almost corporate tax. We have conducted 32 webinars on the corporate tax, and we have covered almost every aspect of the corporate tax. We'll keep discussing this. As you know, the guide on the transfer pricing has been issued. We'll discuss the guide on the transfer pricing as well in our coming webinar, and we'll keep discussing the corporate tax. So whenever there will be any update, on the excise duty, if there will be any update on the VAT, transfer pricing, economic substance regulation, anything related to the compliance of UAE, we'll keep discussing this, but our core focus will remain court protects for the time being. But in case, in case of any developments, we'll keep discussing in between. So the, for the supply of electronic devices, one cabinet decision has been introduced. You can see, sorry, one this year, cabinet decision has been introduced 91 of 2023. This cabinet decision, 91 of 2023, this cabinet decision has been issued on 25th of August, 2023. The effective date of the cabinet decision is 60 days from the date of its publication. And this decision, was put in official gazette, publicized in the official gazette on 30th of August 2023. And effective is 60th day, means September, October. From 30th of October, this cabinet decision will be applicable. Cabinet decision 91 of 2023 will effectively be applicable starting from 30th of October 2023. So this decision deals, what is this decision? Application of reverse charge mechanism on the electronic devices among registering in the state for the purpose of value added tax. This is not a corporate tax, this is value added tax. They are asking applications of reverse charge mechanism on the supply of electronic devices. What is this electronic devices? It has been defined in the respective cabinet decision. In the cabinet decision, they said electronic devices are mobile phones, smartphones. This is the decision which is applicable on the mobile phones, smartphones, computer devices, tablets, and parts thereon as well. And we'll discuss. The scope of this cabinet decision, taxability of the cabinet decision, what are the changes required from that point of view? What will the implications on the supplier? What will the implications on the customer? What includes in the mobile phone? What includes in the smartphones, computer, tablet, and parts? And thereof, we'll discuss everything in detail in this webinar. So just keep in mind, this is a cabinet decision, which is applicable on the supply of electronic devices. And what the supplier needs to do, supplier needs to do, what the customer needs to do. This is they need to, the supplier needs to supply without charging any VAT. We'll discuss in detail. And the customer needs to apply the reverse charge mechanism, but it is subject to certain conditions. So it has been given in the cabinet decision where a supplier provides electronic devices, means where the supplier is supplying mobile phones, smartphones, computers, laptops, or sports thereof. If the supplier is supplying this to a registered recipient of goods, the intention of the recipient was to resell or use them in production or manufacturing of electronic devices 
the following rule shall apply. Before the before going into this, I just wanted to highlight this one. Basically, before the publication of this decision, even as a two day till 30th September, till 30th October, if the supplier was supplying the electronic devices within the UAE, they were straightforward charging 5% VAT because supply of electronic devices was subject to VAT value added tax. They were supplying, if the supply was 100, if the supply of the electronic device was 100, they were applying 5% VAT 105. If the VAT inclusive price might be, if the price is available into the different malls, the price is available to the, if these are where the price is being displayed, that price will be wet inclusive price. We know all, we, we know this. Then if the price is not being displayed, then it will be price plus VAT. So as of today, even till 30th of October, if the supplier is supplying anything to the customer, and these supplier is supplying electronic devices, they were charging 5% VAT. So what was happening? Supplier was charging 5% VAT. This 5% VAT customer was paying 5% VAT. When the customer was paying 5% VAT, they were claiming input tax. And this was the chain basically. So supplier was charging 5%, customer was claiming. Then supplier was charging, customer was claiming. And then now they have brought some sort of relaxation for the, for the supplier to avoid the documentations, the administrative uh, relaxation as well. There will be impact on the car working capital as well because when they were charging, when the supplier was charging 5% VAT, customer was paying, then customer was getting back, might be after one month or after three months. Majority of the player, they will be quarterly return, they will be getting from the respective authority after three months. It will have an impact on their working capital. So by bringing this decision, first of all, the administrative work has come down. Second, the impact on the cash flow, impact on the working capital, it will be relaxed. So they will not be required to do any major documentation. So now they're asking if the supplier is a VAT registered supplier and that supplier is supplying electronic devices to the VAT registered customer, then rule will apply. Now the rule has been changed. Now the, what are the new rules? New rules are suppliers shall not be responsible for accounting for tax. Thus new as per the new rules, supplier will not be charging VAT to the customer. Customer will be liable to pay VAT on behalf of the supplier under the reverse charge mechanism. So if the supplier is supplying anything of 100, they will not charge any VAT. They will issue the invoice of 100. Now the customer, they will be considering purchases of 100. Then input tax, input tax 5, output tax 5, reverse charge under the reverse charge mechanism. So they will be accounting for, they will be, customer will be liable to pay VAT on behalf of the supplier. This is simple change in the law, this is simple change in the rule. Initially, supplier was charging 5%, customer was claiming 5%. Now supplier will not charge 5%, customer will apply a reverse charge mechanism. So we know this, the reverse charge mechanism has two legs basically. One is output tax, means the customer will be liable to pay output tax on behalf of non-resident supplier. This is one leg. Customer will be liable to pay VAT on behalf of non-resident supplier. This is one leg. This is very, very misconception about the reverse charge mechanism in the market. People believe this is output tax and input tax. It will nullify each other. No, this is not the case. Reverse charge mechanism has two legs. One is output tax, one is input tax. Output tax means customer will be liable to pay output tax on behalf of supplier. It can be non-resident supplier and it can be resident supplier in field of electronic devices. So that is output tax. Now the input tax, it all depends. If the customer is fulfilling all formalities, means customer is not making any exempt supply. Customer has a proper tax invoice in hand general criteria to claim the input tax. If this general criteria has been fulfilled, then customer will be able to claim input tax. Otherwise, customer will not be able to claim input tax. So these two different legs. So now the principle, going back to the basics, the initial principle was supplier will charge, customer will claim. Now supplier will not charge, customer will pay on behalf of the resident supplier and customer will claim input tax based upon the general principle. This is the change. But they said this thing will not be applicable if the supplier is involved in the export business. If the supplier is exporting electronic devices, it can be a direct export or it can be indirect export. I'm not going into detail what is direct export, what is indirect export. If the supplier is exporting electronic devices directly or indirectly, this rule will not be applicable. Second most important thing, 
before issuing the invoice, before supplying, supplier will make sure that the customer is registered for VAT purposes. If the customer is not registered for VAT purposes, this rule will not apply. This is a B2B transaction. Customer, customer must be registered for VAT purposes. This is the first condition. Second condition, customer is buying the electronic devices for resale purposes or to manufacture the electronic devices or to produce the electronic devices. These are the conditions. So basically, supplier will not charge if the customer is a VAT registered customer. Customer is buying the electronic devices for resale purposes or manufacturing the production of electronic devices. And for this purpose, the supplier will be required to get the confirmation from the customer before supplying that the customer is registered for VAT purposes. Supplier will be required to get two declarations. Loss is basically in the public clarification set. You can have two separate declarations or you can have one declaration. These two declarations, first declaration is supplier will get the declaration from the customer that the customer is registered for VAT purposes. First. Second, supplier will get the declaration from the customer that the customer will use these electronic devices for resale purposes or for the production or manufacturing of electronic devices. These two declarations. After getting these two declarations, or one declaration containing both of these contents. Once the supplier is getting this confirmation from the customer, then supplier will be supplying the electronic devices and supplier will not be charging any VAT to the customer customer will be liable to pay output tax on behalf of the supplier and customer will claim input tax based upon the general principle. And this thing is not applicable if the supplier is engaged in the export of electronic devices. And this export can be direct export or it can be indirect export. Pieces and parts of electronic devices, as we discussed in the definition of electronic devices, the last word they said, they, can you see this? They said pieces and parts thereof. This will be applicable on the pieces of parts. If you are buying, assuming you are in the business of manufacturing mobiles, you are importing screen of the mobile. Once you are importing the screen, that screen of the mobile, you are fixing into the mobile. Then you are selling the mobile. It means this screen is being used for the production of electronic devices, which is a mobile. So this will be applicable on the parts as well. So what they have given in the, in the, in the respective cabinet decision, that the minister of finance shall issue a decision to specify the criteria should be followed in determining the pieces and parts. What will be the criteria? What will be included into the pieces? What will be included into the parts? We need to wait for the decision from the minister it will one more decision will come as well that will clarify the pieces and parts of the electronic devices publication and enforcement of decision shall be published in the official gazette and it will be effective within 60 days after this decision they have issued fta has issued one public clarification that public clarification is public clarification number 34 We'll discuss the public clarification in detail. Basically, that public clarification is containing the detail about the electronic devices, containing the buying, selling, what are the other application and free zone business, non-free zone business, export business. If they're not complying, what will be the repercussions? If they're complying, how can they enjoy the benefit? Basically, this all they have covered into the public clarification. So let's discuss the public clarification. Hopefully you all can see my screen. Okay, this is a public clarification, VA, public clarification 34. This public clarification, can you guys see my screen? Okay, this public clarification, they said, this public clarification was issued in respect of the cabinet decision 91 of 2023 that we have just discussed, 91 of 2023. 
on the application of reverse charge mechanism on the electronic devices. Distinct wet treatment for certain supply. This is the basically summary of the decision that were discussed recently. Just discussed or summary of the cabinet decision 91 of 2023. The summary is basically registered supply electronic devices where the customer is buying electronic devices for resale or manufacturing or production of electronic devices and supplier will not charge VAT, but the customer will account for the VAT under the reverse charge mechanism. This is subject to certain conditions. The customer is registered for VAT purpose. The customer is given the declaration to the supplier that they are registered for VAT purpose. Then they will use the electronic devices for sale or manufacturing or production of electronic devices. Where they are not given this declaration, it will be considered a normal treatment. Means if the customer is not registered or if the customer is not giving any declaration, then it will be considered a normal supplier where the supplier will be charging output tax and customer will be claiming the input tax based upon the general principle to claim the input tax. So the, this is a detailed analysis scope of the transaction. What is resale are used in the production? They have this one resale. They have given one example. In the resale, For the resale, resale, buying and selling, straightforward involved in the trading business. If they are buying any sell, then they are selling anything, it will be considered resale of business. But if they are buying the one group of company, the group of company is buying electronic devices, giving it to the employee for use in the business, or giving it to the employee for business purpose use, so it will not be considered resale. They were given a very clear example. If the group is buying laptops, these laptops they were given to the employee, employee are using for work purposes. It will not be considered resale of business, resale electronic devices, but it will be used for business purposes. In the same way, whenever they are buying, the company is buying and the company is selling, it will be considered resale. They are just defined in this scope of the resale electronics used in the producer and manufacturer electronic devices. A receiver to the current electronic device for use in the business, it will not be considered a resale. They have given one example the same that I just discussed with you for sale. Electronic or a smartphone will be distributed at professional use among employees. Even the employees are being charged for the receipt, still, it will not be considered a resale. Then they have defined the manufacturing. Important thing is the partial manufacturing is a part of the manufacturing as well. This is the important thing. If they are buying, okay, they are buying the, as you mentioned, screen of the screen of the mobile, they're manufacturing the mobile, they're putting some work on the mobile, they're fixing the screen, then giving to another player, then they are doing the finishing, then they are further selling. It means the where part manufacturing, part manufacturing will be considered manufacturing activity. If the all related conditions are being fulfilled, then supplier will not be charging VAT, but the customer will be paying on behalf of the supplier and the reverse charge mechanism. They are given a recipe and acquire the pieces considered of electronic devices to assemble into another parts of electronic device and insert a semi-finished computer device that is owned by the another person. The recipe and require this is the same thing. I just discussed basically they have given an example of computer. They are buying something, manufacturing semi-finished computer, giving it to another party, then it will be falling under the manufacturing activity. Scope of the goods, electronic devices, important thing in the electronic devices, as we discussed, this covered on the phones, mobile phones, computers, laptops, tablets, or parts thereof. And for the parts, we need to wait for the ministerial decision. So mobile phones, they have given a definition of a mobile phone. This is day-to-day -day mobile phone that is being used. We are using the mobile phone. It will be being used for calling or messaging purposes. That mobile phone is covered under that definition of mobile phone. But the, if we are using mobile sets at home that are connected to the wire, that are not part of the mobile phones and not part of the electronic devices. So they said basically, 91 restricted the phone that operates through the wireless transmission. Only if the operating through the wireless transmission that will be part of the electronic devices. And if they are being used physically through the wires connecting fiber optical cables, they will, these mobiles will not be, sorry, these phones will not be part of the electronic devices. 
Then they define the computer. The computer it can be can be operated through the for the wireless connection or through the physical connection or through the hybrid model. Whatever it is, it will be falling like you are using desktop. Desktop will be considered electronic devices. Your laptop it will fall under the electronic devices. You are using latest laptops where your touch screen that will be assumed as a part of the computer devices. So they have given an example like desktop computers, mini computers, analog, digital, hybrid computers, all these which will be part, part of the computers. Then define the tab tablet as well. Tablet basically it can be it can be like a mobile phone, it can be like a computer, it can be hybrid thing. So it will be part of the tablet. So first of all we discuss mobile phone, mobile phone they said only allowed if wireless connection. For the left for the computer they allowed wireless plus physical connection for the tablet they said it can be hybrid they are given the very tablets are a sense wireless portable personal computer with a touch screen being a hybrid in form with a functionality so it will be considered tablet these three electronic devices if you are buying as a wet registered customer from the wet registered supplier you will be applying reverse charge mechanism subject to the condition you are buying for resale purposes or you buying for the manufacturing or production of other electronic devices. E-reader, they said it will not be considered electronic device. They have given exceptions. It will not be part of electronic device. Now the important thing is whenever you are manufacturing, you are buying, after the buying parts, you are assembling, making semi-finished goods, then you are selling or the treatment can be you are buying selling or you whenever you are buying on behalf of someone then you are selling in the invoice you are showing two separate line items one item electronic devices second item is the charges basically then they said if you are buying and selling and you are charging separately on the separate line item on the invoice these charges will not fall under the reverse charge mechanism only the supply of electronic devices will fall into the reverse charge mechanism. Then we need to apply the composite or single supply principle. If this is a composite supply, if this is a single supply, single supply, it will be one line item. Everything will be included in the one line item based upon the principal component. If this is a this is sorry, it is a composite supply. If it is a single supply, then we need to show two separate line items, and each line item will have a separate tax treatment. So if this is a composite supply, it will fall under the definition of electronic devices. If this is a single supply where you are charging, making charges, they give an example, if the company is charging, making charges, separate supply, it will be subject to tax. It will not fall under the definition of reverse charge mechanism. Then they said, what is the reverse charge mechanism? Under the reverse charge mechanism, supplier will not be charging anything as I discussed earlier. Customer will be liable to pay output tax on behalf of the supplier. And how the customer will pay output tax? Customer will pay output tax by reporting in its return under the respective box. So customer will pay output tax under respective box. At the same time, customer will be claiming input tax under the respective box. So what are the relevant boxes? So relevant boxes will be box number. 10. In the box number 10 of the return, they will be claiming input tax, and in the respective box, they will be paying out electronic devices with the scope of cabinet decision 91 and subject to compliance requirement. Where treatment report and supplier, supplier shall not account for supplier electronic shall be one of the accounts for due tax. Okay, it's fine that we already discussed the way applicable following account. where the supplier registered for that in the UAE. This is the same thing that we discussed earlier. Both supply and recipient must be registered that we discussed earlier. So retain the declaration that we discussed earlier. Supplier must comply with all the obligations. Okay, supplier needs to comply all the relevant obligation means they need to register, they need to get the declaration, they need to keep the record, they need to, they will not be required to report anything in the return. Customer needs to prepare the requirement compliance requirement as well, cover the customer. Customer needs to be a registered customer. Customer needs to give a declaration for resale, for the registration, customer needs to maintain the document, customer needs to report as output tax in its return. The tax recipient shall declare output in the box number three of the wet return. In the box number three, they will report it as output tax. In the box number 10, they will claim as input tax. So both of the party needs to fulfill the respective obligations. 
Taxable supply is falling outside the scope. Basically, this will be out of the scope. If any of the condition, whatever we have discussed, if any of the conditions is not being met, it will be straightforward considered out of the scope. And specifically, they have actual export. We have dis discussed that direct and indirect export, direct and indirect export, it will not fall under this cabinet decision. It will, will be keep charging as usual 0% tax where all export documents are available. We know this, what are the export documents? The one of the biggest issue in the market nowadays, a lot of companies, they are struggling because they were not maintaining the documents, export documents. We know what are the export documents I just mentioned. It will be exit certificate. Export bill of entry, export invoices, bill of lading, what are the requirements of the law? They are not maintaining the document. They need to maintain the document. It will be considered export as usual. If they don't have the document, it will be considered standard supply. But this cabinet decision will not be applicable in case of direct and indirect export. Requirements on the recipient. Recipient, what is the requirement of the recipient? Recipient needs to be registered for that purpose. As I discussed, they need to give a declaration, maintain the record, re report output tax in the box number three, report input tax in the box number 10, and they need to submit the return. What are the requirement for the supplier? Supplier should not charge VAT. Supplier needs to get the declaration, keep the declarations, and supplier will not be liable to charge any output tax. Not meeting the compliance requirement where the customer is not meeting the compliance requirement, then it will be assumed that <clears throat> supplier will be charging VAT. Supplier will be charging VAT output tax. Customer will be claiming input tax based upon the general principle. If they have they are complying the general principle to claim the input tax, they will be claiming input tax. Otherwise, they will not be claiming input tax. If not meeting the requirement, is a recipient cannot recover the input. And this is for sure. If their recipient is not meeting the requirement, they cannot claim input tax under the reverse charge mechanism. But general, by default, general principle would be applicable. The supplier will be charging and customer will be claiming based upon the general principle if the customer is involved in the taxable supply business. But if the customer is involved in the exam supply business, customer will not be able to claim input tax. And general, as I mentioned, general principle to claim the input tax will be applicable. Designated zone will not be considered export if one customer is based on the UE mainland. From the UE mainland, they are supplying the goods to the designated zone. It will not be considered export. It will fall under the local sales, and it will be. It can be subject to this cabinet decision 91 of 2023 but it will not fall under the export business in the same way the businesses that are selling within the designated zone from one party to the other party we know this that the supply of goods within the designated zone is out of the scope but at least it will not be considered export so it, this decision can cover this as well so that cabinet decision as i mentioned it will be effective within 60 days from the date of his official publication in the official gazette and in the official gazette it was published on 30th of august 2023 60 days means 30th of october this decision would be applicable and then i just wanted to highlight one important thing the supplier supplier will be selling electronic devices to the registered customer to the unregistered customer or we can say the supplier will be selling the electronic devices to the person who is meeting the condition, means the customer is a registered person, customer is given the declaration, customer will use these electronic devices for resale, manufacturing or production purposes. This is the one party, second party basically that will not, be. might be they are not registered, might be they are not given declaration, might be they are in the, uh, they are not production. So this is the one category, this is the second category. One supplier who will be supplying these electronic devices to one category to second category. For this category, they will be not charging any output tax. This customer will be claiming input tax under the reverse charge mechanism and paying output tax on behalf of the supplier. This one party, for this party, supplier will be charging output tax and customer will be claiming based upon the general principles. Now the supplier will be required to maintain 
two records. Means supplier needs to maintain not two records, I say, supplier needs to maintain the record for wet registered customers who are complying the conditions and applying reverse charge mechanism. Supplier needs to maintain the record for the customer who are not applying reverse charge mechanism. So that they have highlighted in the uh, supply of electronic devices with the date of supply 30th October later can be subject to V8 treatment and compliance. It may result in suppliers and registered recipients having to apply two different VAT treatments and meeting different compliance obligation within the same VAT reporting period. We all know this in the UAE, there, this is a third sector which is which will apply a reverse charge mechanism on the local supply. One is a crude oil. Suppliers of crude oil are not charging any output tax, but the customer subject to certain conditions is applying reverse charge mechanism. In the same way, the suppliers of gold bullion, wholesale gold bullion suppliers for the gold, they are not charging output tax. Customer is applying reverse charge mechanism under the reverse charge principle. Customer is paying output tax on behalf of the supplier to the FTA. This is the third sector. So first one is the crude oil, second one is the gold, and this is the third sector, supply of electronic devices, where the supplier will not be charging any VAT upon satisfying certain conditions. The customer will be applying reverse charge mechanism. The objective is basically to give maximum facilitation, maximum facilitations and smooth operations of the <clears throat> sorry, smooth operations of the businesses in the UAE. So the government is facilitating thoroughly to have the, as I mentioned, easy, smooth, and uh, and uh, optimum way of doing the business. It will not have any <clears throat> complication for the such business because they will not be, as I mentioned, they will not be required to do any certain documentation. It will have a very healthy impact on their working capital as well. But certain, this is very important in all these three decisions, wherever, wherever crude oil or gold or electronic devices are being supplied to the end user, which are not a very registered party, which is not involved in the buying and selling end user, then straightforward VAT will be applicable, then reverse charge mechanism will not be applicable. Thank you very much. Uh, this is over from my side. This is all the references of the law. You can go through this. So if you have any question, you are most welcome. And uh, in our next decision will be in our next uh, webinars, next, uh, uh, in our next uh, article as well, we'll be focusing on the transfer pricing guide. We'll be reverting back to the corporate tax. So any question you are most welcome. First question is if the supplier sell the e devices to customer who will apply reverse, then such kind of sale for supplier will be out of the scope for UE reporting for the supplier. Yes, you are very right. It will not be subject, will not be standard rated supply, it will not be zero rated supply, it will not be exempt supply, it will be straightforward out of the scope supply. Will supplier issue tax invoices in B2B case and how supplier will declare B2B sales in the VAT return when not applying VAT? Supplier will not be liable to supplier will not be liable to show VAT anywhere, as I mentioned earlier, under the reverse charge mechanism. Customer will be liable to pay VAT on behalf of the supplier. Customer will be reporting in the box number three of the return. Customer will be claiming the input tax. Supplier will not be liable to report. Supplier will not be liable to even issue tax invoice. And supplier will not be even liable to report the sale in the return. So any other question? No. If you have any question, you are most welcome. Yes, please. Prashant, Prashant is asking raised hand. Yes, Prashant, how can I help? If the supplier is not issuing tax invoice, then when they need to deregister, they fall below threshold. No, they will not be deregistered. The basic condition is both of the parties are registered. If the parties are not registered, then this criteria will not be applicable. The condition is both of the parties are registered 
and uh, customer needs to give declaration customer needs to pay but supplier will not be required to deregister under this any other question a and b both are registered traders if b buys from a locally and export a will be required to charge or can be treated as reverse charge a will be required not required to charge because a is not exporting b is exporting for a this is the local supply so whenever a is uh, basically a is reselling whenever the law is asking reselling law is not asking cabinet decision is not asking public clarification is not asking that whenever you are reselling it needs to be resale to the locally or export it will not be but if a is supplying the electronic devices to a party which is out of the ue and that party is reselling or that party is manufacturing electronic devices then RCM will not be applicable, it will be straight forward sale. But A is selling to B, B is exporting. For A, this is the local supply. And law is silent whenever you are resale, local resale or export resale. Any other question? Okay, guys. Okay. Okay, guys, take care. Thank you very much and uh, have a lovely day. We'll be speaking again on coming Wednesday. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the video. Click on the bell and subscribe to the YouTube channel.